I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 3 in my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. This is a 6-inch Tsunami Talking Popper, and one of the stores that I know carries this plug is J&H Tackle in Oakdale, Long Island, uh, both in the store and online. One of the things you can do with a lot of plastic lures is um, inject a little bit of water into them to make them heavier so that they cast further. It's really simple to do because a lot of these plugs have uh, hollowed out cavities in them. Uh, so I'm taking uh, a very small diameter drill bit and just drilling in from the top of the plug. It's making a very small hole. Now I'm going to add the water and I just have a small syringe and in this case I'm adding about five or six uh, cc's of water and there's no exact science to this, there's a, a lot of variability and I would like to add just enough water so that the plug is still a little bit buoyant. And after adding the water I'll just seal the little hole with a little bit of epoxy. Now I'm checking the buoyancy of the plug and it's just hanging on the surface which is just about how I want it. The standard pencil popper retrieve has uh, one hand up above the reel to hold the line between the thumb and forefinger to keep the line going onto the reel smoothly without loops. And here's a look at working a pencil popper. This happens to be a, a Gibbs pencil popper, and we'll, we'll do that one more time. And um, the objective is to just have that plug dancing back and forth, really tearing up the surface of the water. So the retrieve is slow, and you're using that um, hand above the reel to control the line going onto the reel. So these are pretty challenging conditions to catch a nice striper, flat glass calm, clear water. Uh, this is where a pencil popper will excel. It really tears up the water and uh, often can entice or annoy the fish into hitting. And this plug looks a little different than a typical pencil popper, but it's very productive when worked on a pencil popper retrieve. So right there, a fish blew up on the plug and you can't see it on the video, but it's still coming, it's still swirling. So I'm going to keep that plug dancing, keep it going back and forth, and, and, and that fish is still following, and eventually it's going to commit. There we go. I write extensively about surface plugs in the Striper Pursuit book, and one of the things I cover is how you can react to a hit. In this case, the fish blew up on the plug, didn't actually touch it, uh, but made a big splash on it, and then kept coming. I kept seeing the swirls behind the plug, so I just kept that plug moving. Eventually, the fish took it. Uh, sometimes, they'll kick the plug straight up in the air, and in that case, I'll let it sit on the surface. Other times, um, they may splash it once and then uh, show no interest. In that case, I might change plugs. So there's a lot to it, and that's a lot of the fun of fishing surface lures, when you can see the fish reacting to your lure. The rod is a 9-foot medium action custom lama glass. The reel is a Pen Torque 5. Uh, the line is 30-pound test spider wire stealth braid. Um, at the end of the line, I have a 3-foot liter of 50-pound test fluorocarbon. It's joined to the main line with a barrel swivel and is a tactical angler's clip at the end, 75 pound test. Okay, initially I'm a little worried about that rear treble uh, near the fish's eye, but it turns out to be uh, not anywhere near as bad as it looked. Again, I'm just making sure that eye is okay, and if I thought there was any problem at all, I would simply eat the fish because uh, these are great eating. But this fish is in excellent condition, and uh, I'm going to release it. Unfortunately, this is going to be about my last cast on this trip because of a little bit of thunder in the area. You can see this is some overcast, and uh, there's no way I'm staying out uh, in the water with a graphite rod and potential of lightning. Okay, next trip, same plug. And I'm just pausing here a second before I start. I'm just trying to gauge exactly where I want to put this. Um, and you're going to see how it pays off to get an extra 20 or 30 feet on the casting distance of loading the plug because um, I'm only going to get a couple of pops into the retrieve and I'm going to get hit right away. And uh, these Tsunami Talking Poppers are excellent right out of the package, but in this case where I need a little bit extra casting distance, uh, the loaded plug really pays off. Another thing I like about these Tsunami Talking Poppers is that they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, these are $9 plugs, and uh, 
and you can easily spend twice that for even a moderately priced wooden plug um, so uh, these are very good value Eventually I'm going to get a hook in my hand doing this. Oh well, I'll make sure I get it on video. This is going to be a really nice fish that hits early in the retrieve and um, you know this is a rocky area actually the tides up a little bit so you can't see the boulders that would normally be breaking the water at low tide uh, but they're there and the fish know where these rocks are and uh, this fish is going to go right for them a lot of the times I can back down on the drag pressure and keep a fish from breaking me off in the rocks um, this one's going to go in full speed just nothing I can do about it and uh, this fish is going to win if you like these videos please subscribe to my channel